Hi everyone, this is Ben from Connecticut Local, and today we're here with Jen from Tolland. She is a wood flower florist and runs wood and war blooms, who make designs for your wedding, event, home, or gifting needs. Hi, Jen. Thank you for taking time today to speak with us. Maybe tell Hi. us a little bit about your business. Uh, when did you start and what year? Yeah, so I started about um, hmm, two and a half years ago. I'm a little, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't remember the exact date. Um, when I was getting married myself, I was looking to do my own flowers. And so I came across wood flowers on Etsy, but I'm really cheap. And so instead of buying them on Etsy, I mm -hmm. figured out how to do it myself. Um, and I did the flowers for my own wedding. And then mm -hmm. afterwards, I decided I would, well, my friend suggested I go into business. So she basically forced me to sign up for a bridal show. Um, and I made a bunch of samples and I went mm -hmm. to that bridal show. And from that day on, it just kind of, it just kind of happened. I'm actually a teacher in mm -hmm. my, my, like the job I do during the day, but I'm a sort of a florist at night. Mm -hmm. And the best part about the wood flowers is like, I don't need like, I don't need refrigerators. I don't need water because they're not living. So uh -huh. I can create them in advance um, on my own time. So I can craft at midnight if I want to uh -huh. and um, create pretty much anything that a real florist might, but just with wood flowers. Ah, uh, so you're a really creative person then. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. And so is it for everyone in Connecticut or is it only for the local area in Hartford? Um, do you send it to people as well? Yeah. So I definitely, I like to stay local to Connecticut or like I'm near Massachusetts. So I do love my local people and that's where my biggest mm -hmm. push is. I like to work with people that I can talk to and meet in person, but I do ship my products all over. So someone can, uh -huh. someone from anywhere can order it and I can ship it. Um, or a lot of local people will send it, um, they'll order a bouquet or an arrangement for grandma, especially with COVID because people haven't been able to see relatives. So they've yeah. been ordering a lot of gifts. Um, but, I've, but I've even shipped big weddings across the country. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money to ship, but if people want to pay for it, I'm mm -hmm. so. But I would say most of my work is very local to to this area, but I would say all over Connecticut, not just um, not uh -huh. just Hartford or Tolland. Mm -hmm. And uh, can people also come to you to uh, come and get it, or do you only ship it? Um, no, I do a little bit of both. So I do ship a lot, but for locals, I do. We schedule a pickup because uh -huh. I am a home based business, so we schedule a time to meet and for them to pick up their flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's nice to avoid shipping if you can, just because it is somewhat breakable if you were to like have a box yeah. get squished. So I think people do like to pick it up when they can. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and um, what what then are like the types of you know uh, flowers that you create? Like, what is the most popular type of thing that people Ooh. want? <laughs> That's a really tough question. And of course, I'm in my car, so I can't just like whip out samples and show mm -hmm. you. Um, but I would say that, um, one, people really love dahlias and roses, mm -hmm. sunflowers. I actually are one of the harder ones to create out of the wood just cause it's very delicate the way the petals are. Um, what else is really popular? Oh, peonies are another one and hydrangeas. So like, here, this is my, I can show mm -hmm. you my card. So oh, you yeah. can see like, um, you can get, they, I mean, you can tell they're not real, but at the same time, they look pretty real and so the uh -huh. fun is in really getting to like paint them uh -huh. and um so like they come as an ivory color naturally and so then it's i get to get out my airbrush and my paint brushes and just really create a look with them by adding in different like layers of color which is super fun mm -hmm. um yeah so you get it's kind of like i'm half artist half florist uh -huh. heart crafter i'm a little a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and so yeah like one of the benefits of these flowers is that they never die, right? Like they never rot. So you have permanent flowers in that way. Yeah. I mean, especially for like weddings, because people will often want to have something as a keepsake and mm -hmm. you have to pay extra money to preserve your flowers. Or I have a bride, mm. she just messaged me the other day. She tried to preserve her own flowers and then she sent me a photo and it was just like a moldy mess. It didn't really work. So I'm recreating um, the flowers for her to create something with out of wood. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice. So one is like, they don't like you save money because you're not going to have to pay preservation fees. You also, you know, you, I would say like they cost similar, maybe a little bit less than mm -hmm. the real flowers depending on the type of flower, but like you get 
economy out of them. So if you have your centerpieces done, it's nice because you can gift those to your family and to your friends. Um, and what else? Also just like, you'll have them for years to come. So if you ever did, you know, get married again, 20 years later, like mm-hmm. you have like a, a, re- a vow renewal, you could use your same bouquet. Uh-huh. Um, and I've seen brides have kids and then they take their bouquets and they like use them in the photo shoot with their newborn baby girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like a lot of creative ways to to keep them as part of your life, which is fun. Yeah, that definitely sounds fun. And it, yeah, also for a wedding, you know, it's a good memory to have, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for anybody too, because even if you buy someone, you know, I don't know, if you're like me, I kill flowers. Like real flowers do not last long. I just had some, I bought some mums like at, in October and I killed them. Like I had one, one mom, one single mom left on the whole bush and that was it so if you are have friends who kill flowers who are busy people who travel a lot and don't have time to water their flowers Mm -hmm. it's a really great option like you can give them flowers but without giving them something that they're going to kill or that might cause stress or if they have allergies there's nothing to be allergic to like with real flowers Uh Um, which is also nice and if you miss the smell because it's made out of like a porous substance you can actually scent them with essential oils or fragrance oils so you can still have a smell Uh so they can kind of smell like a rose if you want it to be a rose um or it can smell you know like vanilla if you just like the smell of vanilla you know you get sort of that option whatever you want mm-hmm. oh okay so it's also something you can put into restaurants hotels you know uh, yeah these types of places so it's a really great option because like obviously a lot of hotels and restaurants use silk flowers and some silk flowers were gorgeous if you pay money for the expensive ones, but a lot of them are cheap and inexpensive and they look that way. So mm-hmm, it's kind mm-hmm. of a cool way to like have flowers that will last that you could use, you know, for a long period of time, but that maybe are a little bit nicer. Also, they're eco-friendly. So if you think about like a silk flower, you know, it took a, like, that's not a natural product. And so it takes machines to make that mm-hmm. and it, that adds a lot of a carbon footprint to the world. Yeah. Whereas like the, um, these flowers are handmade with a uh, biodegradable, you know, material that's natural. So there's something nice about that too, if you're just kind of into the eco-friendly aspect of it to you. So yeah, restaurants, hotels, anything like that can really have these flowers for a long period of time. If you do like corporate events and let's say you have a Christmas party every year, well, like once COVID's over and you go back to having parties, mm-hmm. you know, you could reuse your centerpieces every year or as, a, as an appreciation, raffle them off to your um, you know, your employees or whatever too. And I also do, oh, yeah. so besides even just doing like gifting flowers, like creating them, I also do DIY parties. So like right now at the holidays, I've been doing a lot of home parties and parties at breweries and wineries where you get to create your own wreath or create your own centerpiece for like your holiday table. Um, so I go to mm-hmm. you or you, or go to that uh, venue and it's just like a fun night out. And so instead of creating uh-huh. with fresh flowers, you do it with the wood flowers. Uh, wow so i didn't know there were so many benefits of having these wood flowers over real flowers right i know (laughs) there's there's a a a lot my husband would tell you there's not so many benefits because it's taken over the house and now he's he's like lost his workout area (laughs) he's like surrounded by flowers and paint but for the rest of the world there's a lot of benefits Mm -hmm. okay and then then the next question what have been some of your biggest challenges along (laughs) your entrepreneurial journey and what lessons did you learn from them doing this? Oh, that's a good one. So the first is you should have a business plan when you start a business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds so simple. <laughs> but, when you, yeah. but when you accidentally start a business, which is how I describe it, right? Like I just did this for my wedding. I had leftover flowers. Mm-hmm. My friend's a photographer. She talks me into doing a bridal show. I thought nobody was going to talk to me. And then all of a sudden I had like 15 weddings. So mm-hmm. I had zero plan of action, like at all. So I would say from the start, it's good to have some kind of plan. It's Uh also good to really take charge of like the financial stuff, especially if you're like a handmade craft business, there's a lot to know on the back end about sales and use tax about like, you know, what can be taxed, what's not taxed, um, how you handle inventory. So there's like a lot of things on the back business end. Like I would, I'm more of like the creative person. So that for me was a lot to learn. Um, And then I think also just being like a mom and a teacher and a Mm -hmm. florist, I think it's important to not get caught up in your business so much so that you like lose sight of everything else. So finding that like balance is 
is really important. Mm-hmm. In always look for the balance, for right? Yeah, you got to carve out time for the things that are important because there's always going to be someone who calls me up and is like, if I, and I say no, and they will try to be like, but like, can't you just make this for me? And I'm in like, no, I don't have time. And they will mm-hmm. keep, keep trying. So you have to be really firm because I know money talks, right? And we all think we just want like get another order, but sometimes it's not worth it when it comes at the sake of like your health or your family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just always keeping the other stuff in mind is important. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, if you were to start all for you would do these things better. Uh, yes, especially the business plan, that one. Yeah. And yeah, and, I'm, and I've gotten a lot better about all the other things along the way. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. And then the next question is where do you want, where do you envision yourself to be in six to 12 months from now? <laughs> so, six to 12 months, six months, well, six months, I'm still, it's still the school year. School year's not over. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to be pretty much, it's hard to grow my business a lot during the school year because mm-hmm. I'm still teaching and working. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm always doggy paddling a little bit during the school year, but in like 12 months, a year from now, I, I really plan to actually have brought on some employees um, to have hired out, um, like, you know, for some of the tasks that I feel like are my least favorite tasks, I want to hire out um, and contract someone to do some of like the back end kind of things to help uh-huh. keep track of emails and, and do some things that, you know, customer service stuff that other people could do versus me. Mm-hmm. I think when you first start a business, you want to do it all. Yeah, and yeah. Then you learn once you grow, you learn you can't you can't really do it all. <laughs> so, so you want to de- delegate more. Yeah, I'm a terrible delegator. I'm <sighs> awful. I I also direct the musical at my school, and and the students will tell you I'm also a terrible delegator. Then I just want to I just like control of it all. But it's at some point you have to for your own sanity. Um, find the right people and and train them well. And so that's what I hope to have in a year from now is some people kind of trained to do some of the tasks that I think I can let go of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah interesting and uh, yeah it's, it's, you know it, sometimes it also takes a while before you really start breaking through uh right like you, you yeah. started two years ago and maybe it takes a few years before you really start delegating and hiring people but what, what yeah. you do that's great Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm getting there. I mean, right now it's just my mom. I mean, she doesn't count, but she counts. So she's in my practice and training somebody. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Then the final question, um, like, right. what's the main way that you, you know, um, you know, shared what you do and how you bring in more customers and get people to talk about you? Is it yeah. Word okay. Of mouth? So there- so I, it depends on what it is, but that's a lot of word of mouth. I think from right early on, I started off with an email list. And when mm-hmm. I would do events like craft classes or bridal shows, I was always running some kind of contest or thing to get people to basically willingly sign up for my email list. Um, so, you know, in mm-hmm. a couple of years of business for me, I feel like I have a pretty strong email list about a thousand uh-huh. people that don't oh. drop off. I, do, I don't lose a lot of people. So they've stayed with me. Um, and so that email, email marketing is not dead by any means. No. Um, then my, my Instagram game for sure brings in a lot. I I'm not as good on Facebook. Like it depends, I guess for like weddings, I feel like Instagram, I put a lot of energy into Instagram yeah. and, and cause that's where the younger people are. Uh-huh. And then, uh, for the craft classes, I, I do more on Facebook. I, I mean, both, I advertise in both places, but like mm-hmm. I will use my Facebook page and I'm trying to get better at doing a Facebook group. Um, mm-hmm. just because my older people, like I'm like in my forties. So like my age on up, they're kind of more on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and my, and, and like the older, like I would say fifties, women in their fifties and sixties love my craft classes. Mm-hmm. So like, they're definitely more on Facebook. Like my mom's age, my mom does not have Instagram. <laughs> she didn't even know what I'm talking about when I say Instagram. What is Instagram? So I, I kind of, yeah, that's it. Right. I, but I remember when I said I would never be on Instagram too. And then here I am. It's just that like, mm-hmm. I like it because for flowers, are very visual and so for me instagram is like a quick portfolio of my work yeah and so i feel instagram is like integral um and then like even with the reels it's just so easy to go and like create a reel if i'm making something i can just show the steps of me making it to fun songs and everyone will watch it mm-hmm. so i i do a lot of social media for sure um and then facebook but a lot of it's also just local word of mouth so if i have a bride uh, I get a lot of referrals from those brides. Um, I, you know, um, an aunt might come to my craft class and then give the card to somebody else. So it's a lot of like very connect, 
like interconnectedness. And I mm-hmm. just, I don't push, I don't, I'm not on Etsy. A lot of handmade businesses are on Etsy. I just, I don't do Etsy. I don't need to, I have my own website uh-huh. and I just have built local and local has built out from there. So people find me through fr- family, through friends. And so I do get orders from far away, but mostly I would say Connecticut. And mm-hmm. I just like it that way. I like staying local. I yeah. like not needing, needing to go like, and try to advertise far away because local advertisement is often very free mm-hmm. and a lot easier than, than advertising somewhere else. And there's a lot of other people who do what I do. So like, yeah. I don't want to take away, you know, if there's someone in Wisconsin who does this, like she should get her local people. Like I don't need her people. I have mine mm-hmm. here in Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, if people want to find you, what is your website? Where can they find you? Yeah. Okay. So my website is www.woodandwordblooms.com mm-hmm. all spelled out. Um, or on Facebook or Instagram at woodenwordblooms.com or not dot com, just at wooden word blooms. Mm-hmm. And then so you can find me there. You can find me pretty much all over. I pop up on my Instagram. You'll see this face all the time. Just mm-hmm. show you, sharing you random things that I'm doing. Um, but my website is has a shop on it. So actually mm-hmm. next week, like this coming weekend, the I don't know what the date is of this weekend, but whatever the date is this Saturday, I'll be launching my winter line. And so I'm okay. gonna have holiday arrangements and ornaments and DIY kits all available starting this Saturday. So up until then, you'll you won't see much up on my website until Saturday. But if you join my Facebook insiders group, you actually get on. Um, sneak peeks and you get to access everything a day early so wow okay i'll put the website in the description <laughs> and uh, your info yeah contact info I would and love it, that. yeah thank you again for coming on the interview with us uh, i love your energy yes. and um, yeah <laughs> i'm definitely going to take a look at the flowers i, ha- I had to have a lot of energy because it's like getting dark behind me and the lighting in my car is terrible so. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm jealous of the good lighting over there. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, I would appreciate you doing that. And on, honestly, wood flowers are great gifts. So even if you don't like flowers yourself, you probably know someone who does, and they're great mm-hmm. to send to anyone who just needs like a little pick me up. It's a nice little memento oh, yeah. to show you care. Oh yeah, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, thank you, and uh, have a great day. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. See, thank you so you. much. I appreciate it. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye bye.